Hey everybody, Detective Fun Guy here. I'm finally, I'm back with another painting tutorial. For this, this looks like a plague bearer, but no, it's not. This is actually a pox bringer. This is a pox bringer. It's basically a herald of Nurgle and a lead plague bearer, basically. So without further ado, let's get started in painting this fantastic miniature. So for the first pox, we're gonna focus on the flesh, of course. So for the flesh, I'm just gonna make sure I grab the right paint just to be sure. Let me make sure I have the right brush, and there we go. Now, where's my paint? I know I have it. There it is. We're going to use, we're going to naturally use Plague Bearer Flesh. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, shake up your paints like so. All right, paint is all sh shaken up. So, what we're going to do, take some, take some Plague Bearer Flesh and put it on the palette like so. Now this plague bear flesh is a little is a little thick, so I do need to thin it down slightly. Just make sure I get a good puddle. Perfect, that's good. So thin this down with a little bit of water. So for the plague bear, what we're going to do is focus all over where we see flesh. So for this part, let me make sure the camera focuses. We're going to go all over the skin with plague bear flesh. Don't worry if you get any other details with Plague Bear Flesh. We're going to go back with Wraithbone and do that in just a second. Don't worry if you get it on the insides. So you can just, again, use Wraithbone to tidy that up. Just cover all the skin with Plague Bear Flesh. All right, there we go. That's the Plague Bear Flesh done. All right, with the Plague Bear Flesh now, now applied, we're now gonna apply another contrast paint to the horns of the miniature. For this, we're gonna use Snake Bite Leather. So, check up your contrast paints like as so. So with the with the snake bite leather now sh now shaken up, so what we're gonna do is gonna do this. We're gonna take some contrast paint and put it on our palette like so. So for this, we're only gonna focus on the horns of the of the pox bringer. So for this, focus on the horns and just the horns. If you get any other parts of the miniature like I did just there, just don't worry. You can just tidy that up later with some wraith bone. And I do need to watch out for the nurgling. I almost forgot about that. <laughs> From the other part of the horns, we're also going to go with this part right here. All wherever, wherever we see horns, except for the nurgling, we're going to save a different color for the nurgling's horns. And also the horns on the head. These horns as well. And don't forget to put the back side right here. And 
And also before I forget, we're also going to use this on the claws. There we go. That's the snake bite. Oh, wait, before I forget. That's the snake bite leather applied. Okay, for the next part of the miniature, we're going to paint the insides and the guts like so. So, oh, before I forget, let me basically go with Wraith Bone off camera before I forget. Okay, for the next part of the miniature, he instead also aside on Nurgling and the bell, he also has a little severed head right here. For this, we're going to just do a simple, a simple application of, of, Gilliman, of Gilliman flesh. So, check out the contrast paints like so. So, take some Gilliman flesh and put it on our palette like so. This is just a spare table, but just don't do this on your table. I'm just using it because it's a spare. So, for this, we're going to apply Gilliman flesh all over where we base coated on the head. See for right here. All over this severed head. Don't worry if you get it on the hair. Don't worry. It would just look more nasty. It would look just look more. It would just look better. We are going to repaint the hair later on, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, that's the Gilman flesh applied to the head. All right. Now, with that with that ba with that contrast paint applied, we're now going to paint this, the plague sword or the greater plague sword. So we're going to use a contrast paint. Black Legion. So, for this, just shake up your paints like so. Oh, just make sure I shake up the paint pretty good. There we go, perfect. So, what we're going to do is this. We're going to take uh, this brush right here. Take some Black Legion and put on the palette. And there we go, perfect. What we're going to do, make sure you don't overload your brush. So, basically what we're going to do is this. And apply this gently and smoothly all over the sword of the weapon of the plague of the pox bringer. And don't worry if you get any parts that are plague bearer flesh, you can just tidy that up later. It will take a little bit of time, but it's really worth spending the time and effort. All right, that's the plague sword done. All right, with the skin now dry, we're gonna focus on the deepest recesses and make it a little more disgusting. For this, we're gonna use a wash, a Thonian camo shade. So check out your washes and uh, contrast paints like so. So for this, take some Athonian camo shade. We're gonna take some Athonian camo shade on our smaller brush like so. And we're going to apply it in the deeper recesses. So right here, right here on the crack right here. And I know it sounds weird, but there's a recess. And also we're going to go along the spine on the outside. Just give it a little more depth. For this, also can focus on each of the ribs. So like right here, where there's a gap in between the ribs, we're going to apply this wash underneath the pectoral muscles. Pretty much anywhere where you see a bunch of sunken in recesses, also here on the right leg, right here. The deepest recesses, just so it gives it a little more depth and contrast. Especially on the feet, like so, right here. Anywhere where you see deeper recesses. There we go, that's the deeper recesses shaded. All right, next part, we're gonna paint the flesh exposed on the arms and inside his stomach, like right here, or his arm. So we're gonna take a mix. We're gonna use Magos Purple and mixed with some Gilliman flesh. So, for this, shake up your paints like show. I'm going to uh, have them both in each hand so I can shake them up. Perfect. So, for this, we're going to take some... Uh, first, I'm going to start off with getting some Magos Purple onto the palette like so. Wash off the brush so we don't contaminate contrast paints. And then we're going to use a, we're going to get some Gilliman, Gilliman flesh. That doesn't matter. You can add as much or as much little as Gilliman flesh as you possibly can. I just want to add quite a few equal mix so that way it doesn't look too purpley. All 
Mix this in with the gillum and flesh. Make sure it's thoroughly mixed, and there we go. So what we're going to do is going to basically just apply this mix all over the flesh. So for right here, for the flesh that's exposed on the arm right here, we're going to apply this all over with this paint. As you can see, it has like that nasty fleshy tone that we're looking for. Really nasty. Don't forget the inside of the arm like so, like on this side. You can also do this mix a little bit around the area like so, so it looks a little more infected like this. And also the inside of the inside of the innards right here. And you know what? This is the this is the thin enough mix, so we're gonna pipe this around the area so that way it looks more infected and disgusting. Perfect. Alright, that's all the that's the fleshy parts base coated. Okay, next up on a miniature, we're gonna focus on the Nurgling, the little demon that's hanging out on his back. So for this, naturally, we're gonna use Nurgling Green. So for this, take your Nurgling Green, shake it up. And this is a layer paint, so you don't need to thin it down too much, but you do need to thin it down a little bit so it gives you a nice smooth coat. Take some Nurgling Green right here. Thin this down slightly, just a little bit with some water. Just a little bit. Perfect. So for this, we're going to focus on the back of the Nurgling first. So for here, focus on the back of the Nurgling right here. And you could use contrast paints. I'm just using Nurgling Green because I haven't done it for Nurglings before. I think maybe I have, but I don't know. I can't remember. And make sure you don't overload the details with the paint and just soak up the excess. Good thing I'm using thin layers. Always use thin layers. All right, that's the Nurgling base coated. So with the Nurgling now drying, we're gonna paint on the Nurgling's horns. For this, we're gonna use a different color. We're gonna use Rhinox Hide. So check your paint like so. Rhinox hide is basically a darker brown. I did. I could. You could use snake bite leather. I just wanted to use this so that way it doesn't get confused with the with the play with the pox springer's horns. Take some rhinox, rhinox hide and just base coat all over the nurgling's horns. Just all over the nurgling's horns. Just be careful. There we go. That's the nurgling's horns base coated. Okay. We'll return back to the nurgling in a minute. So, but for this, we're also going to focus on something different. For this, we're going to focus on the little stomach that's in that's in his uh, inside right here, this little organ right here. So, for this, we're actually going to use a base coat. For this, we're going to use we're going to use Bugwin's Bugwin's glow. So, we're going to use uh, take some Bugwin's glow, shake it up, put some Bugwin's glow on the palette. Make sure it's thinned down a little bit so it has nice even coverage. So what we're going to do, base coat all over the stomach with Bugman's Glow. As you can see, it's not too different from the bay from the contrast pain we applied earlier, which is pretty good. So just base coat this with Bugman's Glow. All right, and that's the Bugman's Glow uh, base coated. All right, for the next part of the miniature, we're basically going to base coat the intestines that's hanging out. So for this, we're going to use a we're going to use a different color. We're going to base coat with Screamer Pink. So shake up your paints like so. So for the Screamer Pink, basically what we're going to do is base coat the intestines and we're also going to base coat all the sores on the model. So for right here, oh, I almost forgot to thin this down. Silly me. What we're going to do is this. Just base coat these all over the intestines. Try not to get any on the skin. Don't worry if you do. You can always go back to tidy it up. It will take a little bit, but it's really worth the time and effort. Also on the inside and the in stomach, right here, the insides right here. So, and also there's the back side of the intestines. Just be very, very careful. Just be very, very careful. There we go. Not too shabby. This guy must have uh, problems. I'm not going to elaborate on that joke. <laughs> All right, that's the intestines base coated. All right, while the guts and intestines are drying, we're going to return back to Nurgling, as I said. So for this, we were going to take a different wash. We could use the Thonian Camo shade, but I want the Nurgling to be a little more green. So we're going to use Beagle Tan Green, a shade. So check out the paints like so. This is this one's a little thick, so I do need to uh, thin it down a little bit with water, quite a bit. The shade is definitely a little thick. I definitely need to thin it down. Perfect. All right, 
make sure there's no excess on our brush. What we're going to do is basically this. So we're going to base coat all over the, we're going to shade all over the Nurgling using, using Beal Tan Green. You could, of course, use any wash you want. You can use Agrax Earth Shade, which is a brown wash, or Ethonian Camo Shade, as I used on the, for the deep recess. I just want to use Beal Tan Greens because uh, that way it has a more green tone. And that's the Nurgling Shaded. So, with our some Screamer Pink still wet, we're going to mix in another paint. We're going to mix in some Bugwins Glow. So, take some Bugwins Glow. We're going to mix into our Screamer Pink. You may be wondering why. It's just for the sore method I did last time. So, you may notice it's a little darker, and that's perfectly fine. So, let me just make sure. Make sure I get the proper brush for this. Perfect. What we're going to do is going to take our longer brush, thin this down a little bit with some water. What we're going to do is this. So, we're going to base coat all over the miniatures, all over the miniatures, sores and guts. Well, not the uh, not the guts, just the sores. So for right here, everywhere where you see pores and that look a little fleshy. Now there aren't much sores on their on his back, but there is one right here on his shoulder, a couple on his legs. And there isn't much sores on this model. I thought there'd be more. And that's the sores done. Okay, next part of the model, we're going to pick out all the blisters and boils. For this, we're going to use Avalanche Sunset. Check out the paints like so. And I make sure to shake this up. So let me get some Avalanche Sunset on the palette. Thin it down a little bit, not too much. We're also going to use this for the eye on the, for the eye on the Pox Springer as well. So for the pox bringer, we're gonna do paint in the eye like so. That's it. And then we're gonna focus on all the bum all over the blisters and boils. So for right here, just look wherever you see like a bump that doesn't look like a pore, like this one right here. And base coat and Everland Sunset. You don't have to do every one, but I just do a majority so that way it looks more nasty. There's also not much boils on this model as I thought. I thought there'd be more. Oh, some on the hands. Right here on the elbow, right here. I actually am surprised. Usually I usually I think it'd be more pores or, or or bumps, but I guess not. And that's all the blisters but base coated. Okay, for the stomach that we base coated earlier, we're gonna go ahead and shade it and just leave it like that with Magos Purple. So we're going to leave it like that. Reason being is so that way we can, you know, just, uh, you know, just have a nice disgusting look. So for this, take some Magos Purple and just go all over the stomach like that we did. You know what? We're also going to use this on the fleshy bits as well to give it a little more disgusting feel. Look at this. Just nasty. I love it. So, and also um, make sure my, let me make sure the intestines are dry. Yes, they are. We're gonna also going to apply this all over the intestines. Now, you can barely see it, but that's perfectly fine. We just want a nice cohesive uh, shade with it, or color. Don't forget the back of the intestines as well on the back side. All right, that's the organ shaded. Okay, for the next part of the miniature, we're also going to focus on the little bells that are on them. So, for this, we're going to take, uh, we're gonna take a metallic paint, Screaming Bell. So, Screaming Bell is a, is a copper paint. This is perfect for a base coat if you're doing copper. So, take some paint, put it on the palette, like so. Make sure to focus the camera. So for here, he has a little bell right here that's hanging off the flesh right here. Right here, perfect. And also, we're gonna focus on the bell that's on his horns right here. This is the most prominent bell. Thin this down a little bit, not too much because it is a metallic paint. All right, and that's all the metallics on this miniature. All right, for all the blisters, we're gonna use a, we're gonna shade them now. We're gonna use flesh wash. So, by Army Painter, take some wash, put it on the palette like so. We are gonna thin this down with water because this wash is rather thick. So, what we're gonna do is this. What we're gonna do is gonna base coat all is gonna shade all over the where we did the flesh. So, you know what? We're also gonna use this on the purple bits as well. 
We're just sending down this down a little bit so that way it doesn't look too good, too disgusting. Actually, you know what? Let's put it all over the body. Why not? It may seem weird, but I want to give this more disgusting look. Look at this. Now, this is what I call nasty. And you know what? The reason why I'm going to do this is because since it's a pox bringer, you don't have to paint him as any way as any plague bearers. And yes, this is actually a last minute idea I just had. <laughs> And I'll be back as soon as I finish the rest. Okay, so with the screamer pink still wet on the palette like so, we're gonna take another. We're gonna take a little paint. So for this, we're gonna take our. Uh, we're gonna take our makeup brush. This is a makeup brush, but they're really good for bed for bay for for dry brushing. So we're gonna have a little bit of white scar. So take some white scar. Oh, let me shake it up first. I almost forgot. <laughs> take some white scar. Put it on the metallic. Put it and mix it in with the paint with the screamer pink. What we're gonna do? Wipe this off, and most of this off on the pan, on the on the tissue or the paper towel, which I'm doing here. So what we're gonna do is this. So right here, wherever there's intestine, we're gonna gently dry brush. Now this is a tad too white, but don't worry, we're gonna go right back and fix it. Just a second. Oops. <laughs> Okay, and that's the intestines dry brush. Now, I did dry brush these, uh, dry brush the intestines a little too big, so we're gonna go back to Megal's Purple, which is uh, this contrast paint, like so. Take some Megal's Purple, go on to the palette. What we're gonna do, thin this down a little bit, so what we're gonna do, uh, go over the intestines that we just base coated. So it has like a nice little uh, disgusting tone. Perfect, really disgusting. And for this part, we're also gonna base coat the bell. So what we're gonna do, or shade over it with, uh, with this, why am I adding purple to it? So that way it can look more like a bronze that's been aged. All right, there we go. That's the bell's uh, shade. Okay, next up, we're gonna go with the hair on the severed head. So for, before we get, we're gonna take another contrast paint, core grunt of fur. So, so I shake up the core grunt of fur like so. Shake it up good. Just making sure my camera doesn't conk out. So what we're gonna do, takes this small brush and get some Gorgonta fur on our palette. What we're gonna do, is gonna base coat the hair on the severed head with Gorgonta fur. You could use Black Legion, but I'm using Gorgonta fur so it looks like hair. All right, that's the hair on the head done. All right, now we're gonna use another dry brush. For this, we're gonna take our another makeup brush. We're gonna use Pink Horror. So, Pink Horror is a, is a layer paint, and we are going to dry brush this all over the intestines. So, uh, I know I dry brushed the intestines earlier, but I'm just going to fix it real quick. Wipe off the paint. What we're going to do is this. So, for right here, basically just gently dry brush over the intestines. Now that's a lot better. Looks more intestiny. There we go. Backside two. You know what? I'm also going to dry brush this part right here so it looks more fleshy. Perfect. That's the intestines and flesh uh, highlighted. Next part, we're going to highlight all the all the copper after we shaded it. So we're going to use fulgurite copper. Fulgurite copper is a layer is a layer paint that is a metallic of of copper. Make sure I uh, mix this with my brush a little thoroughly. It is a little bit watery, but that's what happens to metallics when they sit out. But this one's perfectly fine. So what we're going to do is this. So this we're going to do this. So we're going to layer all over the bells using this. Not all over, but we're also going to use this, a little bit of that. Just wherever, where we use Screaming Bell, just base coat all over this. And this bell right here. Just anywhere where you see the bells. Alright, and those are the bell, and those are the bells uh, layered. All right, one of the last steps, we're gonna paint the teeth. So for this, we're gonna use Wraith Bone. So take some Wraith Bone. We're gonna take some Wraith Bone, put it on our palette. We're not gonna thin this down. We just need very, very little. So what we're gonna do is focus on the teeth right here. On the teeth, teeth, teeth. We're not gonna shade it. We're gonna just leave it as is. And you can just, I'm just leaving the stomach as it is. So there we go. That's the teeth painted. There we go. Okay, for the Plague Sword, we're gonna do another dry brush. For this, we're gonna use Skaven Blight Dinge. So, Skaven Blight Dinge, as I said, is more of a grayish brown. So, take some Skaven Blight Dinge, put it on our palette like so. 
and we're gonna dry brush. Wipe off most of the paint. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna focus on the plague sword. So right here, make sure it's not too, not streaky. There we go, perfect. Nice little dry brush. There we go, that's the plague sword highlighted. Okay, we're gonna dot in the eyes on the Nurgling now. For this, we're gonna use Uriel Yellow. So, take some Uriel Yellow. Take just a small amount, just like this. Just thin. So what we're gonna do is we're also gonna highlight the Poxbringer's eye with this as well. But we're also gonna dot in on the, on the Nurgling as well. Try to keep your hands very steady and just dot in the eyes. Just dot them. That's the eyes done. All right, and this is how you can how you paint a pox bringer up to uh, battle ready or parade ready standard. So for this uh, part, we did like this part right here. We did the we did the guts. We did the plague bear. We also did the nurgling horns, bells, etc. So that's it for today's tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed today's video on chaos on nurgle on nurgle. Nurgle being the chaos god in 40k. So I really hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Bye bye.